doing today? Good. Wonderful. Well, welcome to the Culinary Arts Center. Of course, I'm Lauren, your Culinary Arts Center host. And then today we're going to be making a really uh, sort of local uh, New England dish. We're going to be uh, making a New England clam bake. Um, but of course, I can't do it alone, so I'd like you to help me uh, bring out our Pinnacle Grill chef, Daniel. Hello everybody. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody feeling today? Good. Third day of work. So many activities to do. So much stuff to eat. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed your second night on board. Uh, um, yes. Uh, this is our first actually formal demonstration of the cruise, and we're gonna be doing something that uh, I would say everywhere in the world they call it differently, but uh, I always say is the technique, the most important thing to understand on this one, because. Uh, Depending op upon where you go in the world, you will find something like this, like this recipe we're going to be doing today. But it will be called differently. It will definitely feature maybe some flavor. It might not be in this one, but the technique is the same, okay? So who's been to a clam bake before? On the beach with the rocks? and Okay, so quite a few of you. Now, I know back where I'm from in Wisconsin, we don't readily have beaches available. So um, not, not a whole lot of fresh seafood. So this is a really great recipe that you can make uh, wherever you are in the world, on your stove, um, or you could even probably do it on your grill in a big, a big pot and sort of a, kind of replicate the whole uh, clam bake idea. But traditionally a clam bake is just, uh, it's an informal gathering on the beach with all the fresh caught seafood of the day and it's uh, sort of steamed on a bed of hot rocks with uh, you throw all the all the good seafood in there and some uh, some uh, of the other ingredients and then uh, top it with uh, seaweed and just let, let the, the heat sort of steam it. How about if you don't have a beach? Well, right. That's why we're teaching them how to do it on the stove top. Oh, right. <laughs> well, I mean, not necessarily. I mean, I think uh, this is something that even though you might not be comfortable opening a fire in the middle of the, the beach, uh, you can be definitely think about uh, Make it in advance, okay? And then you can keep it in the nice, uh, what do you call this? Uh, a uh, No, like, um, you know, the stuff that keeps uh, anything warm, hot. Oh, uh, like um, a cooler, but instead of the cool, uh, cooling, it yeah, keeps it hot. Okay. So you can make it at home and take yeah. it with you and anywhere you go. So, um, okay, so the first thing we're going to be doing, uh, I would like to tell you guys what we're using in this one. We're going to be using new potatoes. We're going to be using... Uh, ears of corn, um, which is a funny fact because I never pictured a corn plant with ears. But um, yeah, as you can tell my mother tongue is not English, so imagine me reading the recipe and ears of corn, so I didn't know what it was. <laughs> yeah. So, um, however, I kind of figured it out now, and um, I always have a hard time with these uh, induction things. Okay, uh, one of the things I like to do with this one, okay, it kind of calls for cutting the potatoes, but I like to do something similar to just kind of break them, okay? Why? Because when you break a potato, instead of cutting it, you let the pores open, okay? So when you let the pores open, that will be thickening, thickening, it will be delivering starch to whatever you're cooking. So as soon as you stir, start stirring up, all the starch is going to be thickening your stock, okay? So that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. That's a nice tip to keep in mind when you're making this at home. Mm -hmm. And that's for any, you could do, use that concept kind of for any, uh, any yeah. uh, or soup. soup. Yeah. Uh, so he's, uh, he's leaving the skin on. Of course, this is kind of a, a rustic dish, so it's always nice to leave that skin on. There's a lot of really great nutrients in the skin. Again, uh, yeah, we're going to use a uh, very dark, this one, chicken stock. Now, what would you say is the best way to make a chicken stock? Well, we gotta roast the bones and the vegetables we want to eat for sure. Okay. So put that down first, and then you're going to uh, add in your potatoes. Sorry for the uh, the noise of that. We use induction burners back here, and sometimes they, uh, as the magnets are spinning, they they're a little bit uh, a little bit louder than. Yeah, normal. they actually do. Okay, well, hold on. This is not gonna work. We've got another one. Some, sometimes they they like to work, and sometimes they don't. So we'll try this other one out. Does anyone have induction burners at home? How do you like them? Just, it's like a little time to replace them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always used to cooking on, uh, on gas, so we've got that, that nice open flame that you can really uh, control the heat and you know when it's working. 
There's no flame, it's probably not working. So for this, uh, this particular recipe, um, you can pretty much use any pan that you have. You know, if you've got a big stock pan, now would be a, a nice time to, uh, to try that one out. That one not working either? Yeah. Here you go. All right. And okay. okay. Yeah, it is. So far, it's just working. <laughs> but see, uh, this is what I like to use a uh, real fire open flame because you need to, you get to know when it's working when you see the fire on. So that's you don't have to work, <laughs> right? Okay. Anyways, uh, uh, a few months ago, I was in South America and uh, I came across something very similar to this preparation. Okay, it gets to be roasted. All the onions get to be roasted with the garlic, and uh, they put lard. Okay, so the lard gets to be very deeply roasted, so the flavor profile of the whole thing comes to be a little smoky, if you want to think, think about it. So uh, it will be definitely the same concept, okay, maybe varies on what the variety of seafood you're using and the recipe, but basically the technique will be the same. Okay, this thing is giving me a hard time now. How about this one? <laughs> See how many pans we can pull out <laughs> I'm gonna put the whole thing here and maybe they won't, they won't take any. <laughs> well, that sounds like it's working. Let's see what happens right. there. Narrow. No. Maybe once there's some stuff in it. Anyways, uh, we're gonna be using some mussels, some clams, some uh, tiger shrimps, and lobster, of course. It's gonna be a New England uh, recipe. And then a sausage. Okay, what kind of sausage? It will be upon your taste. You can use chorizo if you like. You can use uh, any kind of smoked sausage, uh, beef, pork, you name it. It's up to you. Of course, the chorizo would give the, this dish a little bit extra spice that might be really nice in there. Yeah. And what kind are you using today? Uh, I'm using just a uh, Polish one. Okay. Right? Could you do that because you know I'm Polish? Uh, no. <laughs> I thought you were coming from the West Coast. Well, there are. <laughs> It makes you change it once in a while. No? It's okay, you can feel polish. It's okay, no? I, I, I don't know of any, uh, any Wisconsin natives who are just Wisconsin. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, yeah. See? That's why it's not reliable to have cooking burners at home. for the technical inconvenience. Um, but like Daniel was saying about the, the different kinds of sausages that you can use and also the different kinds of seafood, all of the recipes that we give you this week, we really like to um, uh, give you recipes that are very sort of general. Uh, we like to think of the recipes as the backbone or sort of the technique to follow, but the, the actual ingredients themselves can be interchanged based on your personal preference, dietary preference, or really just anything you know that, that you may like or dislike. Yeah, and uh, this ear of corn, <laughs> you're gonna cut it, okay, you don't really need to cut it, if you're using a, a I call it like a, the real thing of putting it inside of a net bag and uh -huh. put it inside of the, uh, I call it the pit fire, right. uh, and then uh, you can just leave it whole and that will do, you don't have to deal with cutting it, but this is just because of presentation purposes, and we always care about how it's gonna look on the plate, alright? And uh, actually a couple of weeks ago, um, a couple of